North Carolina fielded provincial troops for more than eight years during the French and Indian War. In this time, North Carolinians served in New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, as well as at garrisons within their own colony. Issued clothing was at times non-existent, and at others, decent, depending on their posting and who was supplying them. Much remains unknown about the provisioning of the North Carolina troops, but in this video, we hope to give you an overview of what we do know. It does not appear that North Carolina had any of its own uniforms produced in the first years of the war, making it likely that the men who built and garrisoned the colony's forts, such as Fort Dobbs, were initially clothed in their own civilian garb. One deserter in 1755 was described as John Giggs, a Dutchman about 33 years of age, six feet high, and is strong made. He wore his hair when he went off and had on long trousers and a brown jacket. A large contingent of Carolinians, including Arthur Dobbs' son, Edward Bryce Dobbs, participated in General Braddock's ill-fated march towards Fort Duquesne in 1755. In February, Governor Dimwitty of Virginia recommended that Dobbs uniform his troops in coats of blue turned up in red. The Virginians had contracted such coats late the previous year. The garments were cheap and simple, without lining, according to George Washington, and of a thin, sleazy cloth, along with flannel waistcoats of an inferior sort. Edward Dobbs' soldiers received uniforms from the Virginians while in Pennsylvania. By the end of 1756, the Virginians had received uniforms produced in England that were as good as any soldiers in Europe. According to Washington, the North Carolina Assembly provided funds for the soldiers to have suitable clothing, but no other evidence survives as to what the troops were issued. It is possible that the Carolinians may have also received uniforms from England, perhaps sharing Virginia's shipment as the two colonies had done with weapons in 1754. An October 1760 reference indicates that North Carolina's officers had uniforms different from those of South Carolina. Once again, it is possible that the men had regimental uniforms. In 1758, North Carolina provided 300 troops who were sent to participate in the Forbes expedition in Pennsylvania. The Carolinians were sent off without military uniforms, nor much else in the way of equipage. One company marched overland from Fort Dobbs, while the other two took ships from the coast. Upon reaching the army, the men were destitute of weapons, equipment, and their clothing was wearing out. One officer, Henry Bouquet, commented they had never seen such misery. As the summer campaign wore on, Washington complained that even the clothing the Virginians, who were brigaded with the North Carolinians, was in poor condition. Washington supplied his brigade with a form of Indian dress, consisting of shirts, leggings of white or green wool, and breech cloths. They were also issued shot bags and powder horns, as well as cartridge boxes. Governor Arthur Dobbs noted that during the campaign, Major Hugh Waddell dressed and acted like an Indian. The Indian dress was not only inexpensive, but allowed those provincials who were engaged in scouting greater freedom of movement as they patrolled the woods of western Pennsylvania. 